The weekly chart we use for our bias or macro perspective, are we bullish or bearish? And we use our daily chart in conjunction with the economic calendar. So if there's an economic calendar that has, um, for instance, a Tuesday or Wednesday, it has a medium or high impact news driver, then we know that there's gonna be manipulation on that specific day and around that time. We go in with the narrative in mind that they're gonna use that initial manipulation to trick people with the wrong direction. So it's like a Judas swing, okay? If you wanna strip it down to the bare chrome, one easy model that I'm just giving to you just like this. This is not the only way to do it. We need some muffler. The lower time frames, four hour, one hour, okay? You're just basically looking at market structure then. You're looking for uh, specific key levels to measure to see swing projections to get low hanging fruit objectives. And when you time the market, and we're using like the silver bullet as, a, as a, a model of choice. It could be as easy as the optimal trade entry. It could be as easy as using the um, 2022 model. Any one of those can form in these silver bullet time windows, these 60 minute intervals, where your, your focus is literally reduced down to one single hour. Now, if you know that there's going to be a medium or high impact news driver, you know those days are going to be really easy for a silver bullet to form. What time does a silver bullet form on? You start looking at it from a five minute chart. You look from a five minute. If it's not there, you go down to a four minute chart. If it's not there, you go down to a three, then down to a two, down to a one. If it doesn't exist on a one minute chart, you have to either let it go if you don't want to go into the seconds chart or go into the 30 second or 15 second chart. Don't go any lower than 15 seconds. But that's how that's where it's going to form. It's a it's a high frequency trading entry mechanism if you're using on the seconds chart. But you're using a criteria that's been formed from a weekly to a daily, specifically aiming on a day that has a medium or high impact news driver, and you're waiting for that initial uh, displacement and manipulation. And you only trade between 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock. The entry must be taken there. If it isn't, you wait to the next session. You missed the move or it's going to be in the afternoon session or it already formed in the London session. There's your rules. It's simple, but you won't stick to it if you're in, if you're undisciplined. If you're undisciplined, you're going to like, oh, you know, I can't do that. I can't follow that. But if you found it, it's going to give you money. It's going it, to you're gonna take losses when it comes, but it makes money. It gives you consistency in terms of finding setups. It's a logic that you can time it. The economic calendar, you can see in advance, what's the economic calendar going to be for next month in June? They're already there. They're already telling you when these reports are going to come out. So you know, okay, there's going to be an opportunity on that day. The Mustang. <laughs> I blow the doors off you, boy. But the idea of not knowing where these setups form, that's all. it's all been canceled. I tell you exactly now where, when, and why. The logic going. Now, what about all the other moves that take place around the other days and intraday that's opposed to that weekly objective or where we think it's going to go to? You ignore it. You filter it out. That's what I was really getting to on Friday. Every long was pretty much good. There were some longs that I should have taken more partials off or closed the trade on. And then not gone short, but I was showing you both both directions, up, down, up, down. The longs were better. Why? Because the weekly volume imbalance was the real draw on liquidity. Now, if you want to be real nimble and you get your five handles when it made itself available to you, like I could have done that up, down, up, down, up, down all day long on Thursday. But your focus is to look for quality over quantity. Your goal should not be, I can take 12 trades intraday in the same day and all of them be profitable. That, that's not something you should strive for. You want to be able to be consistently profitable and content with looking for the best, the choicest, the cream of the crop, best setups. So that way you can trust it. And when you're able to do that, number one, you're exhibiting discipline. You're exhibiting self-control that most traders don't have. They don't have that. The way you arrive at it is having a model that's well-defined, 
what are you looking for? What does it look like? When does it occur consistently? See, if the markets were random, I'm going to say this and close it. If the markets were indeed random, how the fuck is a silver bullet set up possible? And why is it so consistent? Because the markets are not random. They're controlled, they're coded, and they're ran by an algorithm. And because it's coded and it's ran by an algorithm, it has to do certain things. And we are waiting for the time when manipulation would occur, whether it be automated within the part that is algorithmic or if it's manual intervention. We're waiting for that displacement. And we will fall victim to trades that are manually intervened 